Hello and welcome to the Nish Guarda YouTube podcast series. Once again, powered by openbusinesscouncil.org and citiesabc.com. We are in this journey to profile global makers, global creators, and especially people that are pushing the boundaries of business and technology, and how we can actually use the technology of our times to make better narratives, a better society, and as well, uh, uh, I would say, an ecosystem where actually we can all help each other and create more value. It's not easy to deal with all the challenges of technology, with all the complexities that are coming out of these things, and especially in a world that is geopolitical. I think not different because humanity keeps repeating the same mistakes, but especially keeping on our human challenges, let's put it that way. But the, the focus of this podcast is always to portray people that are actually pushing boundaries and especially creating projects that actually can have a very big role on humanity and how we can actually improve our creativity, our platforms, the way we deal with each other. Today, I welcome to our series, uh, Chris J. Davis, which is a fantastic personality and as well the co-founder of Film.io. And um, as a bio, is a person that you cannot put in a box. As a technologist and entrepreneur, as well as a creator, YouTuber, designer, technologist and writer, producer and musician, and as well a former actor. And uh, as well, of course, with a very original and uh, mean bird, his words. Uh, but I would say it's a cool word. Uh, Chris is the CTO and co-founder of Film.io, a decentralized entertainment ecosystem that is democratizing the filmmaking and TV industries using DeFi and other blockchain technology solutions. Film.io empowers fans with more influence in the creative process and creators with key access to resources and investors with more meaningful data. He is also co-founder and CTO of Ingredient Tax Inc., which we're going to be touching. The platform Field.io transforms today's Hollywood system into the blockchain where fans, by participating before movies are made, have a voice in rating, reviewing, greenlighting the future of entertainment, developing an innovative metric that pre-validates the potential for a project's success for creators, studios, networks, and investors that creates, of course, all the areas of blockchain, security, transparency, and trust. Chris is a versatile professional with over two decades of experience in design, engineering, and creative industries. And uh, he started his academic journey in art, media, communications, and English at Asbury University. And he later explored music at the University of Louisville. A pioneer in the early days of WordPress, Chris made significant contribution to its development, creating the first admin dashboard and team system. His innovations extend beyond WordPress, making him an active member of the infrastructure team for the Apache Software Foundation, uh, which is a big thing, and I will highlight this in this interview. And Chris has also played a vital role in various startups, collaborating with tech giants like Janus, Freeze, and currently he's been uh, serving as the CTO of Ingredient X, that he focuses on cutting edge technologies such as blockchain, decentralized finance, and non-fungible tokens in order to create solutions for new business models. Welcome to our series, Chris. That was, that was a mouthful. <laughs> well, it's you have a fantastic uh, profile. So let's start by your background because it's it's a fantastic background that touches arts acting music and mm -hmm. software engineering so normally you have engineers in one side the creators in another <laughs> you combine all of that and of course yeah. you are leading as well a technology platform for film so a bit of your background uh journeys in your life any person or moment that made uh what you're doing today and uh some stories for 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 our audience as well and that we it makes who you are uh, sure. Yeah. Like you said, the beginning of this journey was very non-traditional to end up where I am today. But uh, as early as high school, I knew that creativity was kind of the fuel for my life. And I studied theater, musical comedy specifically, and uh, art, and eventually settled on art <clears throat> as my path forward uh, for various reasons. Theater just didn't work out at that time. And uh, decided to study art, and specifically sculpture, painting, and drawing at Asbury University, a small university in 
the middle of nowhere of Kentucky, but had an amazing art faculty that I really respected and knew I could learn from. And it was a fantastic time, but I quickly learned that you couldn't exactly have the type of lifestyle that I wanted uh, being a full-time artist, unless you were in academics, which I did want to do, but it takes a while to get to a point where you're supporting yourself and a family, which I wanted very badly. And I, I learned very quickly that, and this is something, it's funny that you said you have engineers on one side and artists and designers on the other, but engineering is an incredibly creative field. It doesn't get a lot, the respect it deserves, uh, that the amount of cre creativity that goes into solving problems. And I very quickly learned that my, my brain worked really well for solving problems on the development side, just as well as it did solving problems from an artistic point of view. Being a, music a musician helped because a lot of math and um, and processes go into being a musician. And so all of those things translated really well to being an engineer. And so in the beginning, it was necessity because I wanted to be able to provide for a family. But then I really fell in love with solving problems. I learned very quickly that even in art, what I really loved was solving a problem. And engineering is an infinite number of problems waiting to be solved. And so the more I did it, the deeper I got into it, the more it really resonated with me as a person. And it it fed my creativity, that need to be creative and to make things. Uh, it fed that really well. And so <clears throat> it began this journey. Along the way as well, I kept acting, did independent film and theater as much as I could because I love I love connecting with people. That's the other half of my personality, which is, again, why I wanted to be an artist so badly, because art through art, you connect with people. You hopefully change them in a way. Uh, art is supposed to, in my opinion, affect the world. You say something with your art that you hope will make the world a better place by uh, provoking people to think or uh, affecting them emotionally. And uh, visual arts like theater, film, uh, dance, things like that are have the same thing. You hope when someone sits down and watches a movie that you put out, that they come away affected. And hopefully whatever it is you were trying to convey, they got. Whether it's something joyous like a comedy makes you laugh and and be free and feel better, where a drama might make you feel sad in a good way because you're now contemplating a topic that you wouldn't have if you weren't confronted by it in this medium of art. So when Filmio came up, it was a moment to combine both sides of who I am and the things that I love into one. So using technology to allow other people to be able to tell stories that I hope will affect the world in a positive way because art makes the world better. The more art we have in the world, I believe the better the world will be. And the less art we have in the world, the worse it will be. And so it was a, a beautiful moment to know that the last 20 years of my life I spent, you know, head down coding has given me the skills to be able to help create a platform that allows everyone who wants to the opportunity to create a piece of art and get it out there in the world and hopefully make the world a little bit better for my children and their children and, and so on. Fantastic, and I love the this this kind of uh, how you you combine the two things together, and it's true because at the moment engineering and code are the platforms really for the world. Right. But that's a big challenge when it comes to creators because most of the creators don't understand technology. That's my experience, right. and I think the data tells you that. So, in your background, when you've been, uh, of course, both parallel in the creative world of music, mm -hmm. film, and at the same time on the technology and you had big, ta big tasks as well so not underestimating having been working on wordpress and as well being part of the active member of infrastructure team is quite uh, uh an impressive thing but as well work with the apache software foundation so tell us about these two experiences and how you've been working within these communities that are highly technological and the creative industries as well related <clears throat> like music film and arts Right. So specifically, you want to talk about WordPress and, and the ASF. Yeah, just uh, on this two, because yeah. this two, WordPress, just for people listening to us, yeah. gets less credit, but it's around 30% of the internet. <laughs> right. uh, and, yeah. The, yeah. and the Apache Foundation is as well one of the most important organizations in terms of software in the world. 
yeah, it, they were both incredible experiences that I'm humbled to be, have been able to be a part of. Uh, WordPress was first, and the beginning of my journey there is just, I find this is a pattern in my life that necessity um, breeds these moments, these opportunities. I have a, if I have any gift, my one gift is that I'm not afraid to fail. And I'll just, I'll do anything that I feel like I, I should do. And I don't care if it goes badly. So before I knew how to program, I used WordPress. I was one of the first users of it when it forked from B2, which was the original project. It became a fork and they released it and I was on B2 before. And since it was no longer being supported, I made the switch to WordPress and was like, okay, this is great, but there are things it doesn't do that I really want it to do. And I have no idea how to make it do that. And I asked around and no one was able to help. So I just got irritated enough to just do it myself. And so I started breaking it basically until it made sense of how it worked. And then I started making changes to make it more usable for me. And then it became clear that there were other people that wanted the same modifications that I made for my own personal version of WordPress. They wanted it to be useful for theirs as well. And this was the moment I was introduced to open source software. Because you want to talk about creativity and technology, open source software has some of the most creative people in the world and some of the most altruistic people in the world, because the entire ethos, whether it's GPL, which is what WordPress is, or it's the Apache software license, which is what Apache does and a lot of other projects use, the core belief is that software should be free and accessible for everyone, and that communities should be built up around them to support it. And <clears throat> you can <clears throat> learn through there. People come in, to an Apache Software Foundation project and know very little about development. And through their years of volunteering and showing up, they can learn and come out the other end in three or four years and have a career they never thought they would have because the community supported them, held them up and helped them mature into a system administrator or a junior coder that goes on to work at Google and become a senior and, and in their management in 10 years. Like they have, the, the community is very supportive. And I was embraced very heartily by the WordPress community. And it, it encouraged me to do more. And so I started releasing the things that I was doing. And then I started figuring out because of the way my brain works, I come at things a little differently than other people. <clears throat> and so I started figuring out how to wait, uh, ways to do things with WordPress that no one else was doing. And so I began writing tutorials and putting them on my website. And that, again, was embraced by the community, which encouraged me to do more, which led to the, the, the first theme system uh, that was landed for WordPress. I released that into the into the community. And then I, I built a dashboard and it was brought into core. And that was the first dashboard for WordPress. Uh, and um, there were other small things like the... I built a plugin that helped you manage spam because comment spam became very bad as WordPress became very popular. And so I built a plugin for that. And then the code for that became part of one of the, the premier plugins for uh, dealing with spam and WordPress. It ships with every WordPress plugin. I'm sure today there's no, no vestige of my code left because it's been rewritten so many times, but the, the initial version use some of my code to, to get going, which is the beauty of open source is that I give these things out freely knowing that it can be used, uh, built upon to make something else. And while I am very mercenary in the way I approach things, I want to be paid. I need to support my family. I understand that by that the, the, the roles that I have today are directly tied to the fact that I am part of these open source communities. They allowed me to get the reputation I needed, to get the experience I needed, to build the skills that I needed to be able to go to a company and go, you should hire me and here's why. And so it's not as if giving those things away for free removed my ability to make money. That's the entire reason I have the ability to make money, which I would not have had had I not embraced the ethos and be embraced by the community so that I could learn and, and grow. And the same thing happened with the ASF. <clears throat> I had very good friends who were a member of the ASF and they're actually members as in they've been voted on 
offered membership in the ASF, which is a very small community. The, the people who have done the most for the community in some sense or are respected by people in the community are voted into being actual members. Uh, so they are Apache software members. They sit on the board, they make decisions. I am not that. I am a member of their community. And I came in through that by design, which is interesting because uh, they had a website that they needed overhauled. And my friend who was uh, on the board at the time said, hey, I work with Chris every day. He's a graphic designer. He's a web designer. We should see if he can come in and help us overhaul the site. And I did that. And that fell under the auspices of the infrastructure team. And that got me in the door. And I kept, kept working with them from then on. And um, I've had to draw back my involvement in the recent years because of Filmio is taking up all of my time, but I'm still a fierce advocate for uh, Apache and um, and just everything that they do. I believe in their mission and I believe in the license that they do, uh, which doesn't enforce contributions like the GPL does because they believe that the benefit should be voluntary and that it's in your best interest. If you use an Apache Software Foundation project and you make changes, it's in your best interest to give them back to the community because then the community will give back to you because everyone is making improvements in the software. And if you want to be able to reap the benefit of everyone else's work, you should be willing to share the work you do. And it's a virtuous cycle kind of thing. And so I, I strongly believe in that and have since the day I was introduced to it. And that's kind of how I run any dev shop that I'm a part of. And when I'm in leadership is that we are collaborative, we are open, and we believe that everyone's work matters and that the more we work together and share, the better everything will be, which is also kind of the ethos of Filmio. Like it, you'll see a through line for everything that I do is, is all about sharing and providing more to people so that they can then provide more to us. So this is actually very interesting the way you approach your work as a software developer and within these two major communities that is WordPress, of course, this is one of the biggest, I would probably the biggest software developing community in the world in terms of numbers, in terms of engagement, in terms probably. of impact in yeah. the internet and even Apache. So I want to touch one thing and you touch a very important mm -hmm. thing and it starts with, at the moment, we are in a very big paradox when it comes to the gig economy, which is around $1 trillion mm -hmm. and the creative economy. That is a paradox that is, okay, we have all these tools quite advanced and you are an exception because you can actually master the tools, but 90% of the people don't know how to master the tools. And now this is creating a bigger paradox that is with the, especially with AI coming. And before I go mm -hmm. to films.io, how you see this purely from your experience and your background, how did you manage to separate your hat as a creator and your hat as a business and uh, as an engineer? Because like you said, you had to pay the bills. And this is the biggest right. challenge is that, for instance, a lot of people, including myself, okay, I, we create a lot of content and this content can reach millions of people. But at the same time, it's very difficult to monetize it. And very, very few people can monetize it. And even if you want to monetize mm -hmm. content or creative, uh, your creative talent, it's a massive headache because or you go through challenges like agencies or organizations or film studios and so forth. And at the same time, you get in the catch-22. Okay, the risk starts being, and you have to be a bit of startup of you using uh, Reed Hoffman and uh, some other things that we've been doing. So how do you, yeah. from your trajectory as a creator and, and business and software developer, how do you put the three things and create a balance? Because that's as well one mm -hmm. of the things I would like to ask here. That's a really large question and a good one. Um, you're absolutely right. The the main, in my opinion, the main hurdle today uh, for creators, especially when you're looking at the gig economy, the idea of being able to do this stuff at your own pace and control your own destiny, which is one of the, the big draws of the gig economy, is it, it's twofold. It's one that the established people don't want to give up their stranglehold on the revenue models like YouTube takes the majority of your re ad revenue and you get like 30% or 20. And if you get bigger, they'll cut you a better deal. But for most people, 99% of the people who are on YouTube, if they get access to the partner program, which they continue to, <clears throat> to change the, the requirements, 
Uh, it's always changing. Um, they they get very little of what it is, so it's impossible to make a living on YouTube. Even if you if you had hundred thousand subscribers, the first tier of legitimacy, and you get your silver play button on YouTube, most people still can't make a living. And having a hundred thousand people subscribe to your channel, you get millions of views on your videos a year, sometimes higher. And not being able to make a living off of that is immoral, in my opinion. And this is just my opinion. You asked from my my brain. Uh, it's just immoral to have that tie because the amount of money that's being made by YouTube and that it could be a much fairer split, which would only increase the amount of content that could be produced. Like that's and, and that's really the 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 rub here is that if a creator can make more and sustain themselves and be able to pay their bills and only do YouTube because hitting a hundred thousand allows them to do that. That means that even more content is produced because before you hit that, they have a day job. They are working every day and then they come home and have this passion to create content at night and they find the moments to do it. And they're, they're working hard. They're diligent. They're, they're sacrificing sleep and time with their families. And they reach this milestone, this plateau that has been, signaled to you as your first level of real legitimacy and they still can't make the thing they love their full-time job even though they feel like they should and so that's the first problem <clears throat> is that revenue is not being split in a fair way and there can be arguments made for hosting costs and bandwidth and all of those things of why YouTube feels as though it's an adequate number, this this split. It's just at some point, the creator has to be the most important person in this conversation. And they usually are not when it comes to business. They're they're a advertising unit metric. They're not someone who's making content that makes the world better, which is what I think it should be. The other side of that is another thing you touched on is that it's incredibly difficult as a creator. You're already balancing having to learn. We'll just use filmmaking as our example. How to run cameras, how to get good audio, get good lighting. You have to learn how to edit. You have to learn how to color grade. You, all of these things already, that is a high bar for a lot of people to be able to clear. But millions of people are doing the work to clear that bar. And then they get to the point where they can make content that looks good. It sounds good. It's meaningful. They're proud of it. And then what comes next is how do you market it? How do you monetize it? YouTube is easy, but you don't get any money. You need brand partnerships, but a lot of the brand partnerships are predatory. And especially when you're small and they take advantage of you with absurd requirements to get very little pay. That whole world, the creator thinks they've just done all the work they need to be successful and make a living off this thing they love to only find out that that was the easiest hurdle in some sense to making this a sustainable living. And the hard stuff is just happening now that you've gotten your craft to a certain point to where people might think about watching you. Then you have this entire world that opens up that is about taking that content and making it uh, monetizable and be able to support you as a creator and this be your thing. And we have not been as developers and technologists, we haven't been giving people tools that are easy to understand and that are geared towards creators first and advertisers and brands and large companies second. And that's one of the things we're trying to solve with Filmio. Filmio is a creator and fan first focused software platform, and it always will be. We will be entertaining investors and studios because all of these people need to be part of the community. But the thing that we're building is for creators to connect to fans and fans to connect to creators so that they can partner together and as a team, as a community, create good content. And along with that comes monetization. How do we leverage blockchain and its technology to help create new revenue streams for creators that are not managed by large middlemen or middle people that are taking large chunks of that revenue for themselves as a fee for you know doing all of it for you. So that that's one of the things we're excited about with blockchain is that it, it has the possibility and we've seen it work to create decentralized 
forms of not only finance, but of revenue generation uh, and monetization that can be directly led by the creator um, and not be locked up within these large entities that kind of give the creator what they think they're worth or what they think they're due or what they think they deserve. And the creator gets to drive that conversation as opposed to being a very small but active part of it. So first of all, congratulations for Films.io. So I want to touch uh, the elephant in the room. You touch oh, the elephant in the room. So at the moment, we are in a, a web that is very fragmented. So mm -hmm. we have 1.2 billion websites in the world. <laughs> There's, uh, and this is official numbers, but it keeps growing. Might be a bit less, a bit more. Yeah. Then we have, of course, from the 8 billion people around the world, there's around, at the moment, I think almost 3.5 billion people that are playing games. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to films, almost all the revenue is coming actually from popcorns and different things. And even the studios are doing a lot of things. And then we have in one end right now, the paradox of uh, the streaming companies, the old studios and all the new the innovative platforms like yours. And as well, even right now, Amazon, Apple and the likes are actually taking over uh, the world of film. So my question, and, and it's a big one, sorry, I will touch again, but <clears> I think fine. you guys are touching a big question. And I, I completely agree with you. For instance, if for people listening to us, there's uh, I have over 100,000 uh, subscribers and uh, I'm very grateful for all the people involved, but that's a massive investment to achieve these numbers. Uh, yes. And for instance, in my case, I'm close to 17 million as we speak uh, views, but this is a huge investment and people yeah. sometimes don't understand. And as well, there's, there's always this kind of, I think right now there's a paradox and I'm sorry, I, I will go through the angle, but I want to touch is that yes. people think in the internet, you you have to be organic, you have to do these things, you cannot buy followers, you cannot do this. That's another completely lie because in the end of the day, YouTube, Facebook, Apple, and all these guys, they leave. Apple takes 30% from every app right. that gets released and yeah. Google leaves from advertisement, ironically, although they say that people cannot buy and do these things and the same with Facebook and so forth. So when it comes to film, uh, and what you guys are doing is is very important. And of course, I'm one of the people that have been talking about blockchain probably first than most. Uh, the challenge is always, okay, how we can actually really, first of all, make creators understand that they have to be business owners, like what you said about your career. They have to be technologists and creators at the same time, which is very difficult for most of them. Right, yeah. And second as well, most of our educational organizations have no digital uh, for instance, I have uh, relatives studying in film schools. There's no digital education, no digital <laughs> at all. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's kind of, okay, we are preparing people to do research and a lot of essays about film history, but then they come right. to the business world and they, not just that, then there's a paradox as well that people like us that are more hybrid, we're not very well taken. So when you created film.io and you have a great team and you guys created as well a community of 200,000 people, how are you tackling this problem? Because until we tackle this, we'll continue having all this fragmentation. And I think for me, this is right. the biggest, that's why I wanted to interview you guys, is that the biggest challenge is, is really that I speak with a lot of filmmakers, a lot of producers. I've been having some here and I will have more going forward. And I have a lot of friends of mine that actually have, for instance, I have a couple of friends that are really big Bollywood celebrities. Oh, and yeah. some of them I profile uh, even on this channel. And the channels is that, these guys have no sense of ownership of their IP as well. Yeah. So I think uh, my question first is how you deal with IP on film.io, first question, mm -hmm. and then related, how you actually tackle the problems that I mentioned before. Because without tackling the problems, you cannot really create a community that works. And as well, you need a lot of money to to, <laughs> to, to create a sound technology as you, you lead in the technology right. you know very well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that you're, I agree with you completely. There are the massive questions in the room and they are going to be long-term problems that we solve. There unfortunately is no silver bullet, but I believe, and we believe that there is a trajectory we can put the, the world on and there are steps we can take to get us there. And we, we believe we can be a force to start pushing the industry towards that uh towards that goal in a way that others have not 
Uh, when we talk about IP, everything that we do, the IP is retained 100% by the creator. When you when you add a project to our platform to begin the process, you own everything. We have no stake in it. And that is an important thing to make sure people understand. When you sign up and put a project on, we're not asking for any rights, any of that. I mean, we'll we'll have the normal rights like to say Bob has their project on Filmio. Like we need to be able to advertise that you are using our platform. But as for actual IP rights, that is retained by the creator. And the creator then gets to decide what they do with their IP rights. And that will be um, monitored and uh, managed by tools that we bring online. Uh, we will be, you know, th these are future looking things, but uh, our roadmap has integration with things like open law where we can uh, create uh, contracts, legally binding contracts that link to smart contracts that can then be executed. So if you wanted to bring on a DP because you're a writer, you have a film, you want to bring a DP on and they're willing to work for a percentage of profit or uh, IP rights, then you would be able to create a legally binding contract that is then executed via smart contract with the two of you in it. And now the legally binding, transparent, immutable record of this relationship being drawn and that here's how the remuneration happens and what ownership is and all of that stuff we're trying we really do believe in blockchain and the decentralized future that it it brings and we want to bring that into every level of what we do from things like trying to make all of our legal agreements as much as possible blockchain backed with you know transparency all of those things to um as you were saying it takes a lot of money to make content. It also takes a lot of people to make content. They they say when you when you start a movie, really no matter the size, you're bringing a small village together or a large city, depending on the scope of your budget and your film, for an extended amount of time. You live together, you eat together, you're you're like you you leave your families and you become this new family village as long as it takes to make the film. And so that's an important thing to also be able to offer through our platform because we we believe very strongly not only do filmmakers need to be fairly compensated for their work, but we believe that the people that make that film possible need to be fairly compensated for their work from the actors who are starring it all the way down to craft services. And that is not something that is really done today. You know, you'll get one actor who will negotiate with their really good agent because they have a track record for a $20 million salary on this. And then you have bit players that make $50 a day or they'll, if they're in the guild, they'll make, they'll make guild scale. Uh, and then you have PAs and craft services that make 18 bucks an hour. And, it's, and, and they all make that project come to life. If they weren't there, it wouldn't matter how great your actor was, <clears throat> how good the director was, and how fantastic the script is. If those other people aren't there to hold lights, hold microphones, make sure that rigging is done correctly, nothing happens. They should all be fairly compensated and they should all be given the tools to be a part of the things they want to do. And so we have technology in place already and we're going to be growing and expanding on it to allow for the makers in, in this community to come in and be a part of Filmio and say, I really love your project. I love the the synopsis, the lookbook. You have a sizzle reel you put up. You know, I'm a DP with 20 years of experience. I would love to talk to you about being your principal shooter on this film. And we can talk about how we're going to pay for it, but it allows organic connections to be made where people can find the projects they want to really be involved in all the way down, not just a really great actor and, and, and a really great cinematographer, but someone who's the best rigging expert in Hawaii. There's a film being shot in Hawaii. They have a filter in Filmio that says, show me all films in Hawaii. And they get a, a notification. They go and say, hey, I need to be on this and here's why. And they create these organic connections and we become a hub for people to find each other and hopefully create even better movies that are more representative. So you don't have the same five people doing these jobs anymore. More people have access to these to say, hey, you might not know who I am, but here's my resume. Here's the stuff I've done. And then you have a wider uh, group of people to pull from, which means diversity goes up. Representation goes up, hopefully. The things that we need in this world, uh, we're hoping to push forward. 
uh, the the question about education, which is huge. Um, the other thing that we want to do is we're building the foundations of what we internally call Filmio University. And the the goal is, you know, we, we always wanted this to be something that if, if you didn't know anything about filmmaking, but you knew you had a story you wanted to tell, I believe every human being who walks on this planet has a story that only they can tell. It is unique to them. They just need the ability and the encouragement and the moment to bring it out. All of those won't be earth shattering stories, but if they affect two people, three people in a positive way, inspire them to do something and then they go and do something and then they inspire three people and you multiply that by infinity because anyone can join our platform. I believe that giving people the tools and the education to go from a concept, an idea to a fully realized produced project, if it takes five years, it, that doesn't matter. If it takes them five years to learn the skills they need, to produce all the material they need, to find the people they need, we're there for them. We're holding their hand as much as we can along the way, giving them the tools and the assets they need to do that, while also hopefully you know, generating income for the platform along that way, because the platform needs to exist. It needs to fund itself. Uh, and so we would find ways to monetize that as a company, but not in a predatory way, which is, again, what we're trying to combat here is the predatory approaches some companies have. And we're trying to loosen the stranglehold that uh, some production houses and studios have on what gets made, because that's really at the end of the day, if you tick off all those other boxes and the project, <clears throat> excuse me, the project you want to make doesn't meet the uh, projections of what is going to make money this summer, then it doesn't matter how good it is. They're not going to make it because it's not a superhero film. It's not a tent pole. It's not a sequel. Whatever they decide is through their analytics and data, they think they're going to make the most money on. Not what people are going to love the most, but what the most return possible is. And a lot of times, you know, those aren't the best movies that could be made. And so I, I hope for a world where we don't have five major studios. We have thousands of studios. And maybe they specialize in one thing. Maybe they specialize in romantic comedies or they specialize in dramas or biopics. And they've built communities up enough that they can make anything they want. And they are able to focus 100% on the thing that they, they're passionate about, which means more of that content will be able to be viewed and possibly made. So... We're trying to build tools to educate people, to give them the support they need uh, so that th that future can happen. So the challenge here, so so let's look at uh, the way, let's look at user journey on film.io. You touch mm -hmm. different ways, like you said, from the perspective of the the entire film team that is it becomes right. an IP, like an actor that that participates in any film. If the film gets successful after 10 years, it's still an IP. That's the actor. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, at the same time, we have this. We have all this, uh, for instance, the, the strike of the actors in Hollywood because right. of AI. So even me, I'm building AI and I put already avatars in AI. And effectively, this is going to be a massive disruption because we have already Indiana Jones and films like blockbusters where actors from the past can be... Uh, transform young yeah. um and some case with with their authorization in the case of the end of jones but in no other cases without their authorization or yeah. without even uh at the moment there's even other paradoxes that is the use of in order to create an ai model special generative models and you are a technologist you have to have a lot of mm -hmm. data a lot of uh old yeah. footages uh, or old uh, data or books or, or whatever so i'll so first of all, the, let me go by a very practical question. So the first question is, if I'm a, a creator, a filmmaker, that I want to work with film.io, let's look at the user journey. Let's start with that because mm -hmm. I think that's particularly the, the biggest question is making things simple. And normally yeah. I build technology and I, I understand that it's not easy to make it simple to the point of, of course, sometimes it's about the branding. and some, Most of the platforms, with some exceptions, take decades to get mainstream um others are more, are faster depends on the budget depends on a couple of things but nothing happens by accident so let's look at this user journey experience in a very simple way but as well like you said the rights you mentioned that the, the the filmmaker and the creator will have the rights but as well 
how you can actually create value for the film industry, which right. is what film.io is. Yeah, uh, great question. The the user journey we've tried to make, I care very much about user experience. I want things to be as pleasant and as easy as possible with the least amount of friction that makes sense. Because if you get to the point where there's no friction, then usually the user experience suffers because you need some friction isn't necessarily a bad thing. Too much friction is. And so we try to ride that line of making it as easy as possible, especially for someone who might not be as technically inclined. Like you were saying, a lot of filmmakers, they just don't use a lot of these platforms. And when they want to come into hours, we want them to be as comfortable as possible and give them as much help as possible. So the user journey for a creator and a fan are, are different. Everyone in our platform starts off as a fan because we believe everyone, even creators, are fans of content. So being a fan of content is why you became a creator in the first place. You wanted to make the thing you love. You had to see it to love it. So you begin as a fan and you are given access to our platform, which has helpful user journey walkthroughs. So there's a little help button, you click it, and it'll actually draw you around the page and show you what things do and how they work. So that is invocable as you need. Uh, but we tried to make thing as, things as intuitive as possible based on, I'm a big believer in building on learned patterns. So most people have used Facebook or something like it, or Twitter, or LinkedIn, all of these social networks have things in common. And so reusing these patterns that people already know is a very good way to get them comfortable quickly in your new software that they've never seen before. And so we try to keep that in mind, <clears throat> that there are things people are trained to do, and we want to leverage that while introducing the new, very unique things that are that make Filmio Filmio. And so as a fan, you come in, you're you're after you agree to the, the terms of service and things like that, the privacy policy, what's allowed and what's not. Uh, you are introduced to our explore page, which is where we surface a lot of content for you to begin interacting with immediately. And we've made that as visual as possible, which I think is a very strong foot forward because people react to visuals a lot more than they do text, uh, especially with the way that the mind works and the eye goes to specific colors and things like that. So color theory and user behavior goes into the design of everything we do. And that I have a philosophy as a UX designer of drawing you deeper into the software, beginning with a very um, easy to understand, e easy digestible thing that pulls you deeper and deeper in and you are learning as you go so that you're not thrown into a place where nothing makes sense. And you don't really know what's going on. And so the that's how that works. Uh, we have things like our DAO, as we talked about before, has membership levels so that you can upgrade your DAO level. It doesn't give you any, you know, it, it allows you to have possibly more influence in the DAO when proposals come up and things like that. But it doesn't make you any more or less a valuable member of the DAO. It just shows that you've you've learned certain things. You've been active in with staking and sharing and reviewing all of these things that we want people to do to help projects move through our system we uh, tie those to the DAO and have DAO tiers that you can earn that just proves that you're a, an active positive member of our society because we want positive interactions as opposed to negative ones as much as possible so we try to incentivize positivity and uh, not incentivize negativity uh, in that in that world, there is a prominent call to action for creating a project. And anyone who is a fan and has created their account can become a creator in our system. There is no application, any of that. Your application is clicking that button and creating a project. And that, is, for me especially, is incredibly important that there are no hurdles between a person saying, you know what, I have something I want to say, and being able to start the process of saying it. That is a process. I'm not going to say it's not because going from I have an idea to I have enough of an idea that it makes sense to put it in front of another person is a process. And we have tried to make that as easy as possible. There's a multiple step workflow that you can go through. You can stop at any point. And if you if you see you need a lookbook and you don't have one, you can just save your progress. Go find out what a lookbook is, which we have 
educational material for so we can tell you what a lookbook is. Here are some examples. We've covered all of that. And then when you've made your lookbook or found someone to help you with it, you can come back and pick up where you left off. Now you have your lookbook, you have a poster, you have a story, and you have enough to publish your project on the platform. And then you submit it to our DAO. Every project is a DAO proposal. And currently, because we are in early access, which is a closed beta, and we are just building the DAO and all of that, we kind of have a council that approves the projects because they have to line up with our terms of service. You know, there are things we can't allow on our platform. No matter the artistic desire behind the project, there are things that legally we cannot have on our platform. And we have to make sure that anything that we push to live, that people can see, line up with those. They are very limited in what they don't allow, and we're very generous in what we do. And then once that is approved by our, our steering committee, if you will, uh, then it is published on the platform and anyone can then interact with it. And as a creator, you're given a dashboard that is continually maturing, that gives you as much analytics and data as we can. Because the other thing we don't ever want to do is keep a creator from seeing the data about their project. and. That is one of the biggest things that we're seeing with creators that are coming to us. It's like they're used to, if they have something on Netflix, they don't know how many streams they've had, what any of those things are. We don't ever want to be uh, a wall between creators and the data. So we're continually trying to get more data to the creator, but in a way that makes sense and doesn't overwhelm them. Because if you just throw the kitchen sink of data at them, then it's not going to be useful. They're just going to be desensitized to it, and it's not going to mean anything. So we're trying to push data to the creator in a way that makes sense, that's understandable, and they can immediately see how their project is doing, as well as take steps to make their project better. You were talking about AI earlier, and we are as well working on AI, and we have machine learning. But our line in the sand is that AI should be ethical, it should be trained ethically, and it should work for the human not in place of the human or against the human. AI is like any piece of technology. AI, AI is not good or bad. It just is. How it is used and how it is trained by humans is determines if its impact is positive or negative. And so we are trying to 100% push the narrative uh, forward that needs to be pushed, which is AI is just like any other tool. It can make a creator's work better. And that is how we're employing it in Filmio. And when we use it, we're, try we're being as diligent as humanly possible of making sure that it's ethically trained, because that is that is the biggest concern in my mind, is that it's been proven that a shadow of a doubt, almost every AI agent that has gotten any kind of uh, mass adoption, when you look at it, has been trained in ethically questionable ways, sometimes on purpose, in my opinion, sometimes not. It's just... People have biases and they're inherent in who they are. And if you don't have the right group of people involved in training an AI, then the AI will inherit, just like children, the biases of its parent if they are not exposed to anything else. And so we're trying to make sure that we don't fall into that trap so that when things happen with AI on our platform, that they're ethical, they are diverse, and they represent the whole of humanity, not just a subset uh that was training the ai and that is a long-term process because ai is ai just like blockchain is just at, at at its inception it's it's very beginning it does a lot of amazing stuff right now but it's not been around very long and it's going to evolve and change as time goes on and we are focusing on blockchain and ai in those terms that this is a long-term development effort it's going to evolve. We need to be able to evolve with it. We need to be able to control where it goes within our own auspices, which are in our own platform, and make sure that anything that we introduce, we introduce in the service of the people that use our platform. And that's a hard thing to do, but we're committed to doing it. And, you know, it makes us move a little slower on some things, but I think that that is us being, being reasonable and uh, being being responsible instead of just throwing stuff at the wall and going, now we have AI, yay, just integrating open chat, uh, open uh, the GPT stuff. Like 
it needs to be done correctly. We're doing it as fast as we can, but we feel like it's it's improper to just do it tomorrow because we can without weighing the implications and making sure that it actually makes our users' lives better as opposed to creating more drama, more stress because of the the way it operates. So we're very much committed to it, just like we are blockchain. And we're just trying to keep in mind that it needs to be done correctly. And the first version of our AI tools are already in development. They'll be out soon. Uh, and just like the blockchain tools, we're continually working on them and uh, readying new releases that have new integration with blockchain. Uh, we just make sure that it's done correctly. And that our North Star on that is always, this thing is cool, but does it help people? And if the answer to the both of those is yes, then that's what we do. That's really impressive. Uh, so in terms of, uh, and I know that I'm finishing the time, so I want to be respectful of your time. So I've got more time if we need. So Okay, perfect. So a couple more questions if possible. So in terms of, uh, so the platform is amazing. And of course, we'll put all the links uh, for people listening to us. It's just go and check your, whatever channel you listen to us. But mm -hmm. so the challenge is, like we discussed, is, okay, how we can get traffic for a film that actually right. creates our traffic, first of all, or views, point one, of course, but then investment and different areas. So you mentioned uh, the DAO, and of course, for people listening to us, the central, the central autonomous organization. I'm not going to technical. We had previous meetings here. You can check and we'll put links to what is a DAO and so forth. But one more interesting for people listening to us, if you are a creator, of course, probably you are not so interested to understand all these things, but it's quite important. So let's yeah. look at the, the model from, so you mentioned the user journey, you mentioned the way it works, but so the traction is the key element. So yes. tell us a bit, uh, uh, if you could look at the traction, I know that you guys at the beginning, of course, it's a new project. Uh, it's a great domain as well, film.io. So I think it's easy to find and people <laughs> find the brand straight away. But yeah. uh, uh, <clears throat> some traction, and you mentioned, for instance, the WordPress community. How are you building the community? Because for us, one of the success of WordPress is effectively a community that is sustainable and keeps yes. growing. So yeah. that's the kind of things that I would like to hear. Case studies and how you're building the community. Because that's the, the thing that will make film.io successful worldwide. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And I think the before I talk about actual things, I want to just talk about the philosophy that we're underlying everything with, which I think is in, in, crucially important, and I believe wholeheartedly in it. And that is fans want to be involved with the projects that they love, with the films that they love. Right now, there is a disconnect between fans and the things that they consume, right? If you go to a movie, the only interaction you have with your favorite movie is buying a ticket, which is passive. It, there, there's no real, other than saying you supported it, you saw it in a the theater, there's no real joy connected with that because you didn't help get it made because you're buying the ticket after it's been released. You didn't have a voice at all, even if it's just expressing your thoughts on it. You weren't able to help people find out about it necessarily and we believe that all of those things fans want to do we you can see it in um, things like fandom and the movie database where they they spend countless hours curating the the like um, the movie database especially that's all wiki driven so people spend hours curating those pages making sure they're accurate attaching articles making sure the people that start in it are right like they devote so much time to a movie that they've seen once in a theater and that was the only interaction they had with it. And they spend so much time with it, with this world and universe that has been generated by it after the fact that we believe we give them the opportunity to take that passion and put it in the entire life cycle of a project, not just after it's done. The creator puts the idea out with all of the data they have and fans flock to it because it's a horror movie and that's what they love. And they're looking for new horror movies. That's why they come to our platform. And they go, this is fantastic. They use our sharing infrastructure to show that they support this and put it on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and, and wherever, send emails out. 
the things that the passion they have for this genre, they're able to funnel it into getting other people who love the same thing to know about this new project that's happening on Filmio. That gets them through. We have a Go Score journey is what we call it. The Go Score is our metric that is a proprietary calculated metric. It's like the Rotten Tomato score, but not evil because uh, Rotten Tomatoes is now evil. If you see how it works. Um, and we calculate a lot of stuff. We calculate social interaction. We calculate commercial viability. We have some machine learning in there. And the, the Go score is how we calculate our best guess of how successful this project might be. And the more fans are interacting with that project, the higher their Go score is and the faster they move through the journeys phases, which are like development, proof of adoption, which is do people like this or not? all of these moments and it's all backed up by by the blockchain so all of that data is ensconced in the blockchain transparent fairly immutable you can verify everything and once they get into development because they have built a massive 150,000 people are attached to this project have reviewed it they've staked tokens to it uh with our utility uh governance token the fan token they that stake is a DAO vote in that proposal that is this project. And you can see all of these things happening with this project, which allows it to go to the next step, which is fundraising, which we are helping as much as we can. Uh, and we have plans to have more fundraising mechanisms that are our own proprietary ones in the platform. They're under development now, but we also help connect financiers who, uh, financiers are, are looking for content all the time. They all, they, they, there is a, a massive desire for content across Apple, like you said at the outset of this, you know, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, HBO, Showtime, they all have streaming services. They all need content for them. There is a never ending need for new content. And so we fully expect all of these entities to exist within Filmio as studios. They'll have a, a level playing field. They won't have any more power than anyone else. They just have to play by our rules, but they will want to because this is another viable avenue for content to be made. But in our platform, they're working with the creator. They're dealing with the creator. And the creator has just as much power as the studio does in this because we're not weighing it one way or the other. Studio has the money. Creator has the content that they need. They need to come up with an equitable agreement. And then <clears throat> they can move into de to development, production, post-production and release. But the beautiful thing is that your, your community that you built continues to grow as you're moving through each of these phases. And it goes with you with every phase. When you're in development and there might be a shortfall of cash, all these things happen. You have 150, 200, maybe you have 300,000 people now because they've been with you and keep growing. And you can put a call out. I uh, we, we had this thing, something broke on the set of this micro budget film. And you can put a call out to your community to help you close that gap, to cover that shortage, to buy that new camera, because your community is now completely engaged in the success of this project. They have done so much already. They feel like they are a part of this, not just passively on the outside. They are on the inside now as partners helping you get this. Their role is helping everyone know about it, helping you move through Filmio to get to the different stages. And then in these moments, possibly going, I'll, I'll put five bucks in because I have $5. I won't buy a coffee today. I'll give you $5. 100,000 people do that. You have the money to, to fix whatever it is. And all of these tools allow these projects to move forward. And then when you release, we don't see this as a one-time thing. We see a creator go through this entire process. It'd be amazing at the end, they have a, a really well-made product that they are able to then share with the world. And they just go back to the beginning and do it again. But the trick is they take their community with them because all these people, <laughs> they're on this journey for two years that takes a film to be made, aren't just going to go away. They're going to be waiting for the next thing that this creator they now have, they, they now feel like they have a real relationship with. They, they know this person because they were with them along this journey. That person sends a message to all of the backers or the people who staked to their project and say, hey, thank you for doing that. I just wanted to let you know that I have a new project I just launched. Uh, we're, we're doing the sequel to that. Or, or I have a new movie that is for another character that was in that. And all of those people are then now able to move to this new project 
and begin that process again and have the same type of interaction. And we believe that that is going to be the core of our success. That's going to be the core of our traction because fans and it'll it'll be a new thing for creators because creators aren't used to having that type of involvement. Some creators, it will rub them the wrong way. And we understand that. And the creator gets to decide how involved their community is because the creator is in control of their project. But I think there is going to be a the, the younger creators that are happening, uh, that are coming up now are going to get the fact that these people are just as passionate about the thing that you want to say as you are, and they are just here to help you make it happen. And they're willing to stand up and do it. And this audience that you're building will go with you when you release it. So you're successful. You put it on Shutter, or you, you get a deal with, with uh, HBO Max to stream it or Amazon. You just let them know this is debuting on Amazon Prime on June 1st. Everyone will show up and stream it because they've been there waiting and they have a real connection to the project they never had before. And I I can't imagine like that is so exciting. It, it, telling people who are so passionate about content and that that freak out about these films that they can be they can freak out every stage of the film's evolution as opposed to just the end that every fan will want to be a part of this. And once creators understand the power of what we're bringing to the table and the power that that fans look at all the TV shows that fans have done campaigns for that have saved. The Expanse was canceled by sci-fi. And I'm a part of that community. I helped pay for billboards to go up outside of Amazon Prime. And it was picked up for two more years. That type of passion and, and interaction and commitment to a project like that being activated at every point in the project as opposed to just at the like when things are going wrong or when it finally hits a theater i think is going to transform filmmaking because you'll be able to do more because the fans will help you do it as opposed to just saving the project they help you get the project made and then they're also there if there's a problem if it gets canceled on sci-fi and tv show you already have a massive audience that is plugged in they've been there for you the whole way they know the project like the back of their hand. They're going to want to then come to your aid. You can rally them with the tools on Filmio to do writing campaigns, buy billboards, you know, do a donation campaign to take Ether to pay for a billboard. That's all stuff that we can do potentially in the platform. And I think that traction will happen by that. Creators will get the idea that it's something that's amazing. They should they should embrace. And the more creators embrace it, the more fans will embrace it. And it, again, uh, I like the idea of a virtuous cycle. So it becomes a virtuous cycle that the the environment we're building will attract more creators, which will attract more fans, which will attract more creators because the, the, the fan base is there waiting for something to inspire them. And that is, I think, going to be the biggest traction engine for us. Uh, and then as these things come out and they're successful, the bigger creators will go, this is a viable option for my passion project. I, you know, I release through Magnolia Pictures, but I've got a passion project that they don't have any interest in because it doesn't fit their fiscal year forecast, which is fine. They can come to Filmio and they can put that passion project here, build their community, release it, and it becomes a viable option for these things that may not have been easy to make for even an established director or filmmaker because of just Everything's a PL at the end of the day for some most of these studios. And it's like, this isn't about making money. This is about telling a story that matters. If I break even as a creator, I'm happy because I make $150 million movies, you know, for Marvel. But man, I would love to make this movie that'll cost $7 million that is in three locations. That's about my childhood because it matters to me. That is an easy sell on Filmio, where it would be wringing your hands and going through the ringer trying to talk to a massive studio that talks about movies in the the stratosphere of 150 to 200 million dollars with five with like 1.5 billion returns and that's just where they want to start and that's the other that's the other goal of us is to be able to tell allow people to tell stories regardless of the budget we're going to have 150 million dollar projects on our platform i completely expect that in the next three to five years there will be massive projects that come out of here that it costs that much because the, the idea warrants it. But if we have five of those a year 
And we produce 500 projects that are between three and $7 million that tell stories that matter to people. That's a massive success to me. We, we have done what we set out to do, which was allow people to make more content that hopefully is good and better. So that was a lot. I'm very passionate about that topic, as you can see. Uh, and no, no, I, it's, make it's, sure. uh, I appreciate and uh, I, I, I want to thank you for your time. I, I think for people listening to us, that's much more I would like to ask, but I think it's really important to look. I think, yeah. the, like you said, it's all about the ecosystem and building yes. the ecosystem and as well engaging and uh, creating an audience for people listening to us. It's not easy. It's extremely no. difficult as we discuss here. And um, well, first of all, congratulations for the project. I know that is not easy to, to kick off yeah. something like this and especially in the time where creators are probably more confronted with so much tools that get you distracted, but as well with so much opportunities. So we'll put all the links. I don't know if last thing, any, any quick win you want just to suggest to the audience and things that you want to pop up, uh, we can take it forward and uh, where they can actually do the first steps or stuff like that. Yeah, no, I just go to film.io. We uh, Right now we're in early access, so we're handpicking creators and uh, that that get what we're doing so that they can give us good feedback because we are in that mode. Where we're trying to make sure that our public launch is the best it can be. The software is the best it can be. And so we're inviting fans on in groups of 10 and 15,000. We have an entire mechanism for it. So if you go to film.io, you can sign up for our wait list for uh, creators or for fans. And uh, we, we, like I said, we're, we're inviting people all the time and we are rushing headlong to our open beta, which will just let anyone create an account anytime they want, which will be in the foreseeable future. Uh, there are so many moving parts to that that it's hard to give any kind of definite time frame, but it is as quickly as possible because we're so excited about what we built. And we really feel like we've come to a place of maturity in the software that it can really benefit people. And so we are working as hard as possible to get all the restrictions of creating accounts off. But in the meantime, you can go and sign up. You can learn more about what we're doing at film.io. If you're a if you're a gearhead or a tech geek, our black paper is there and you can get more in depth on what we're doing. And um I mean that's it. Just if you love cinema like I do and you love making the world a little bit better every day, I think you'll find a home here with us. And I just uh, hope that you give us a shot to to see if that's true. That's amazing. Uh, so Chris, uh, wishing you the great success and I hope it becomes really a global platform and count on me for whatever needed to promote. And uh, for so all people listening to us, please engage. This is the great platforms that we need to get engaged. And a lot of people just do the work of understanding and engaging. 